Hello, listeners. Quick cold open to inform you that after our usual episode, we have a very generous interview with Mr. Brian Mathis, the brilliant voice of Elias. So please keep listening after the end for that. And on with the episode we go. <laughs> Hello, and welcome back to Wallacast, a podcast where we talk about English dubbed anime and the voice actors who work on them. I'm Lauren Salter. I'm Matt Walker, and this episode's show will be The Ancient Magus Bride. Yay! Magus Bride! Magus Bride! <laughs> Or, or Magus Bride, depending on who you Ugh, ask, I guess. Whoa. Magus. Well, I say Magus, so... <laughs> I like Magus, but... <laughs> yeah. It just makes more sense with... Me. But I've heard it both ways, yeah, so... Yeah, I can see Magus being like Because it's mage. a mage, yeah. Yeah. But Mog, <laughs> the magi it could be or... a Mog. No. Mog? Okay, Mog <laughs> yeah. sounds terrible, too. Yeah. <laughs> so, it's one or the other. Anyway. Magus Bride. This is one we've been... Well, I don't know. I've been excited about it since last year. Yeah, this is definitely one of the anime I've been looking forward to... For quite a long time. That one and, like, Violet Evergarden were, like, yeah, two totally. ones that I've been been sort of very anxious to see and, and very anxious to, to talk about, and I have seen it. Yeah. The first um, exposure that we got of Manga Sprite was at Anime Expo 2017, uh, where they actually had the world premiere of it. Um, but mm-hmm. we just saw a lot of banners and posters and stuff um, about it. We didn't get to the premiere, but we saw... The first three episodes in theaters, like, what, two weeks later? Yeah, we kind of opted to, to pass on the premiere just because we said, hey, we can see it in theaters. That's going to be even better. And there's so much to do at AX, and we didn't... There's that, too. We had so many lines to sit in that we were like, uh, we could probably make another panel if we don't go to this, so... Yeah. But we were really happy to hear that this got dubbed. Uh, yeah, not a, not a big shocker that yeah. it did, considering yeah. it's, uh... It was it was very hyped. Yeah. I, I don't feel like I don't hear about it as much all of a sudden. It seems to have dropped off quite a bit. Mm-hmm. But it was definitely big last season. Yeah. I almost said last quarter for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> Business tone. <laughs> I guess the the first thing that I would like to talk about is the casting of it. So we, like we just said, we saw the sub of the first three episodes before, I mean, it was like seven months before the W and came out. Well, before you do, we want to do our little normal oh, yeah, quick summary before we show sure. the board. Sorry. We'll edit around that. <laughs> um, okay, so quick summary for those initiated who might want to pause the podcast soon and go watch it and then come back. Ancient Magus Bride uh, was done by Production IG. It is a 26-episode show. I'm probably going to get 24. that wrong. 24. 24 episodes. It was you know, last, I guess you could say last two seasons, really, because uh, it's a two-course show. It tells the story of ha- Hattori Chise, who is a slay beggy, a sort of magical human slash not quite human person who can mm-hmm. see fey creatures, these magical beings that help magic happen. She is bought by the ancient Magus in the title, Elias, who is definitely also not human. He's just the big guy in the, with a the skull head that you see in all the cover art and things like that. And he's bought to be his apprentice slash future <laughs> bride, of course. And you learn that he ha- he has a lot more complicated backstory than we realize at first. So does she. Mm-hmm. She obviously, she's she sells herself into this uh, by choice. And so obviously you have to be a pretty in a pretty low point in your life to have to do that. And so it's basically the story of how they both sort of grow as characters together um, in this very, very magical place that they uh, find themselves. That's kind of the quick pitch, I guess. Yeah. Uh, once again, we will be talking spoilers. So yeah. if you have not seen it, you should. And we... you should uh, go do that now because <laughs> we're about to get into yeah, it. It is on Funimation. They're the ones that dubbed it. So you can go on their website and watch the whole thing. If you want to watch the sub for whatever reason, uh, you can go to Crunchyroll and yeah. see that. Sweet. I actually quite liked the voice acting in the sub. Again, we only got three episodes, and I hadn't read the manga at that Mm -hmm. point, so we were kind of going in blind, but I really liked the lower register for Chise and for, well, in that, I I think maybe I was just pronouncing it Elias. Wait, what do they They, say? in the Japanese, they pronounce it Elias. Elias, that's the one. And in the the English, they say Elias, which I actually prefer just the sound of that, Elias, and then Elias. And I am the opposite. Elias tells me like you're saying alias. And I, I I know the name Elias. Like, I've heard that before, so it's familiar. 
I don't know. I just like the the ring. The it rolls off the tongue for me better. I think for me, I'm the opposite. I <laughs> kept thinking it's Elias, but that's okay. I mean, <laughs> it works out. The voice acting for Chise. So Matt and I like to kind of look at shows or see a preview or something. You're like, oh, such and such would be a great casting choice. I mean, don't, choice. don't we all do that, right? That's, well, that's true. <laughs> so we kind of came up with our own dream cast, I guess, for this before it came out. Based on the sub, I was thinking that Chise would be a little bit lower of a register actor, maybe like Brina Palencia. See, I kind of wasn't, even though the sub was that way. Mm-hmm. The character came off as someone who, to me, wouldn't be because it would be hard to show that sort of innocence and confusion and vulnerability if she was too low registered, especially right from the start. Hmm. That was, it was hard for me to pin down who I thought would be it. I think I ended up settling on like Jill Harris was sort of an idea I had in my head. There are definitely some other ones and there's some, there's plenty of actors who kind of have the the range to go low and high. Mm -hmm. Um, But obviously neither of us predicted who was cast no. uh, because she doesn't exactly have a ton of roles under her belt, but that's totally okay. Yeah. Um, I, I love seeing new people get, get, get good roles. Yeah. And the actor we're talking about is Danny Chambers, yes. who I just checked the MAL, which might not be the best source, but I enjoy it. And it's, it only has a couple credits. It's usually a lot more current than like BTVA. So well, that's true. So there you go. Um, according to MAL, she has three credits right now. And both of them, two of them are, this season or past season, because she's also in mm-hmm. Card Captor Sakura Clear Card. Yeah. And of course, this is only for anime, so this doesn't count credits yes. that she may certainly have done before this in other uh, aspects of entertainment. Yeah. So, for the most part, most of this cast were relatively new and unknown for me. I don't know about you. You know a couple more than I do. Yeah, I knew. I mean, I knew most of the cast. Brian Mathis, the other lead. He's just, he's a lot of supporting roles, so he wasn't like a voice that's like, yeah, I know him right away. Mm-hmm. And then going back through, it's like, oh yeah, okay, who's that? And he's that. And it's like, okay, got it. But you don't see him as a lead almost at all. So this was really cool to see to see him cast as that. I, I had Chris Sabat in my mind mm, as yeah. Elias, um, or even David Wald as well. Yeah. Though Chris was my, like, easily default. But um, I'm sure we'll get into more detail, but I loved Brian in this. I mean, we can go into <laughs> I it guess right we now. Could. Yeah. I would say he, sorry, Japanese Seiyu, whoever played Elias in their version, but uh, I think Brian blew him out of the water for the for the three episodes I saw in theaters and sub and for the OVA I saw in sub. Like, I don't know, to me, he had so much more richness, so much more nuance to his performance. The, the Japanese sounded like a pretty generic low voice that mm-hmm. could be voicing almost any character versus this feels like it fit Elias really well. I thought he had that the gravitas that was awarded to someone who is of his stature. Mm -hmm. But also when we learn later that he's not really human and he actually struggles to maintain his form and he's often quite confused about how humans behave, that he got that naivete down really well. He got the sort of weariness that Elias has because, again, this is hard for him. And a lot of that sort of genuine curiosity, but curiosity with sort of a wisdom behind it in in a weird way. Like, he doesn't understand people, but obviously he also understands a lot of things anyway, so he's not dumb. Mm-hmm. But he has this sort of, yeah, really interesting, like, informed curiosity of, of humans and human emotions, and I don't know, all of that, I think, was portrayed really well, very subtly, of course, but... He had a very nice... Oh, I just had the sentence in my head. <laughs> he was very fluid in going from his mage form to his i don't want to say demonic form but you know his less of a human form yeah more monstrous form yeah his yeah, that's a good way to put beast it beast form his, maybe yeah considering his, this is kind of like reminiscent of a certain story that a lot of people already know like that reading the beast perhaps yeah <laughs> um so he did that very seamlessly from one emotion to the next which of course is what they're paid for but um i really did after the f- I mean, after really the first couple sentences, I, I kind of got on board with him. And yeah, it definitely. It, he has that such a rich, low register, which, as you know, I, I love. I think the thing that sold me on it the, like, for the first episode was when he did the sort of incantation to teleport them mm, to yeah. his home. Nettle in the shadows. <gasps> False holly in a ring. Twine the branches. Entangle. Enmesh. Spin a spider's web. Oh man, that sounds so cool. <laughs> yeah. 
And he has that such a that rich, full yeah, exactly. Voice. It's just it really works for him. And I like that how there's sometimes kind of a a breathiness behind it, but it doesn't lose any of its intensity. Like that's kind of like what telegraphs. This is hard for yeah. him. Most things are hard for Elias. And it really is a credit to Brian that he had so much emotion when you don't see any emotion except very rarely when he's in a human form. Yeah. You don't see Elias in a human form often. So you're working with... Yeah, that skull really doesn't just, exactly telegraph a lot. Yeah, you're working with a skull that doesn't move. It moves a little bit, but there's no eye movement. There's no face movement. So no. it's really... It was really cool to see how he... How he did mm. emotion based on just the script and yeah. the direction. He has one of my favorite line deliveries of the whole show. What is that? Which, and it's funny because I actually love this line, but in many other contexts, I would hate this kind of line. And I do usually hate this kind of line, <laughs> which so Laura knows this, but you guys don't know this. Like, I, I'm really not a fan of the whole cheesy romantic one liner <laughs> that is often said in very important moments in a, in a show. <laughs> like, often totally breaking the mood or off and it's often very absurd yeah like my my, my favorite go-to example now is if you, anyone's seen arrival they've learned to talk to aliens and communicate with them and the amy adams character says like isn't this the most incredible thing you've ever experienced or whatever and the dude says like oh no i was falling in love with you so oh, it's, like, it's like oh shut up dude you just met aliens yeah no it isn't the moment man anyway <laughs> but elias has a moment like that that I think that I really like because it works so well with his character. And it's the last episode and we, when he says to Chise, Are you what beautiful is? Mm -hmm. and the reason why I don't think that's an eye rolly one is because that seems like a genuine question to him. Yeah. Like he's is. not saying it to like, hey baby, are you what beautiful <laughs> is? Mm -hmm. It's <laughs> it's just like he has just seen her and realized, is this what people talk about when they say that word? Which totally makes sense because throughout the show, he always is questioning, like, what is this feeling? Exactly, yeah. I feel like this. What does that mean? Yeah, and, I feel tingly or I feel yeah. cold. What is that? I f yeah, is that, and, you know, it's loneliness, it's love. It's... And that one's just like, oh, man. <sighs> and I don't know, just like something about that delivery was like, oh, man, you're beautiful, man, you're beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> you're beautiful. <laughs> anyway, I, I love that line. His counterpart here is, um, as we mentioned, Chise Hattori and played by Danny Chambers. Again, it took me a couple episodes to get used to the fact that her register is higher than the Japanese seiyu, because that's what I had heard first. Yeah, this one, um, it took me a while to warm up to, too. Not necessarily yeah. because of the pitch, but just, again, it just wasn't what I expected, I think. Mm -hmm. And because it's a voice I don't know, I think, You didn't as well. expect it from Chise, or you didn't expect it from the actor? I didn't expect it from the actor, Got it. I think is what I mean. Got it. <laughs> um, again, part of it's, I don't know this voice, mm -hmm. for better or for worse. And so, and I think... And I think it just felt like she grew, she the actor, Danny, grew with the part. Yeah. As sometimes you do. Like, I've, I've, I've seen other performances where the first episode or two isn't quite the same vocal quality as mm -hmm. subsequent episodes. And I have to imagine that simul dubs are even worse for this yeah. because you're just thrown in there. You've got very little time to understand the source material mm -hmm. and 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 work with the director and it's like all right we got to get this out because the episode's going to debut here soon yep. so let's go 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 and this is a big role for a first lead <laughs> yeah yeah chise very high profile is, yeah and yeah very high profile it's a very complicated character mm -hmm. because chise is you know a, she sold herself in slavery she's very quiet at first she has a lot of internal monologue in the manga um there's just so much to her but she doesn't say a lot until later. Mm -hmm. So that to capture that with so little dialogue is so hard. But I think Danny did a great job of this. Yeah, in the end, I really liked her performance. Mm -hmm. And um, she definitely, again, with those emotional outbursts that I love so much, <laughs> uh, she really brought that, she really showed her talent with that. Yeah, I would definitely agree. I look forward to hearing more from her as well. I would like to self-congratulate myself. Uh, for one casting choice that I totally called. I called one too, but I don't think it's the same one. I don't think so either, which is interesting. Um, I called Colleen Clinkenbeard. I'm so not. Like, when I saw that, because you mentioned you called someone, as soon as I heard her, I was like, this is probably the one. Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> see, I she mean, she read the manga, so she had the opportunity to call yeah. that character. I yeah. didn't, because I didn't see any of that. And I tried so hard not... I don't think I ever said it out loud either. I think I just was like, oh, I have a 
I think I have a perfect casting choice for this character, but I'm not going to tell you who the character is because we don't, <laughs> you know, you don't meet Titania until later on in the anime. I feel like that's cheating. <laughs> Titania and Titania. Uh, you know, it's <laughs> funny. She brought that up on Twitter too. It was really funny. <laughs> So Colleen Clinkbeard plays Titania, the Queen of the Fairies, in this, which, as I read the manga, because I read it first, um, I totally called. I was like, oh yeah, this would be a great role for Colleen. And lo and behold, I was so proud of myself. <laughs> that was that was the only casting choice I got right, and I was proud of it. <laughs> Who was yours? Lindell is Todd Habercorn. Oh, you called that? Yep. Wow, good for you. Yep. I, for whatever, I don't know why, it just seemed like a Todd role. I really, really love Todd in those softer, smoother assassin. characters like that. Yeah, just like about it. assassin. Like that's that's kind of yeah. what kind of gave it away for me. His his genteelness. Yeah, I really love him in those kind of roles. It really, I think they're my favorite of his. I yeah. you know I love Natsu and all of the big characters, but this like his slower and more mature. I don't know. I just yeah, Lindell is a great character. First of all. Mm -hmm. um, but that's the kind of role I love seeing from him. <laughs> I love I love him and Elias's relationship, and I love <laughs> Elias's die yeah. every time he gets like made fun of or whatever. Totally a mentor mentee <laughs> relationship. <Yeah. laughs> I liked that. I and I really liked that episode that they explored their relationship. I like backstory episodes, mm -hmm. and I like the episode with him and Chise when she gets her staff. Uh, wand thingy. So good. Actually, that's if I had to say what's my favorite moment of the entire show, it's probably that. Mm -hmm. The whole forming of the wand, her becoming the magical, mystical phoenix, and flying back to Elias. Like, visually, visually. Audit auditorily, audit audibly. Auditorily. Auditorily, right. yeah. whatever. The sound and the music is what I'm saying, peoples. Mm -hmm. That was that was brilliant, and just uh, everything about it. And, and the whole, I love her sort of mental landscape with, with um, Nevin, I think mm -hmm. is the name of the dinosaur, yep. dragon I it's definitely a dragon. dragon. It looks like a dinosaur to me because <laughs> he doesn't have wings. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, yeah, I I really like that. All that stuff. That was that was a great sort of. I don't know if that was officially like the act one finale, but it felt like it. It definitely felt like yeah, it. Yeah. So that yeah. anything in the land of the dragons in the beginning half was definitely a highlight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that especially that phoenix flying the phoenix yeah. flight was just like you said visually. And I really liked the callback to the first episode where Elias summons a phoenix out mm -hmm. of thin air to show Chisei that magic exists. Yeah. Can we have more flame dresses, please? Okay, thanks. Because, yes, <laughs> oh my god, so pretty. <laughs> uh, another casting role that completely made sense to me was Stella, uh, played by Skylar McIntosh. Mm hmm. Yep. That was a fun one. Yeah. Um, we've heard Skylar in a couple things. Um, is that a being the main one and Clockwork Planet, I think, are the two that I've heard her in. Yeah, pretty much. I've heard her in a few minor roles here and there beyond that. But yeah, those yeah. are the big ones. She does this innocence for Stella very well. I think she was great. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, in fact, I, th I like her in this one probably better than the other two hmm. shows yeah. overall. She definitely nailed it in this one. That was fun to see. Um, what did you think of Cardophilius, Josh Greeley? Oh, I love Josh's yeah. this. That was another big one. Um, I love Josh's villains. He doesn't play them that often, but he all—he really does that sort of crazy, unstable character very well. And the and I, I like that you can... He does the high-pitched villain. Like, it's easy yeah. to go, I'm the low-pitched evil guy. <laughs> but sometimes it's harder to do the, the higher-pitched sort of... And, of course, because you've got Joseph, which is the other name... Okay. Um, He's he's like eternally young. He's he's very childish in a lot of ways. He's got this multiple personality thing going, and I just thought Josh nailed that. Mm -hmm. We got to see Josh at Komori Con. I think was the last time we saw him. We saw one of his panels, mm -hmm. uh, and he was a he was a hoot. Yeah. I would have liked to meet him. I think Matt met him. Yeah, I met him. Yeah. Um, he just had an autograph signing just in the dealer's hall, and there weren't that many people there, so I just kind of, I had nothing to get signed, so I just kind of came up and said, what, you know, hi, how you doing, love your work and all that, and got to chat with him a little bit, and yeah, great guy, um, real fun, really generous, obviously super nice, they all are, but. Yeah. I, I totally forgot, either I forgot or I missed this casting announcement, because as soon as he spoke, I was like, oh, that's our event. I forgot it, yeah. I'll admit. I remember reading it, and then I remember forgetting, and then yeah. going, oh, right. 
I knew that. Yeah, he. I really liked him in this. But um, I forgot a lot of people because I had no context for who these people were. Right. Because I only saw the first three episodes and I hadn't read the manga, so I only know a very small handful of characters. So most of these were like, yeah, that person. Yeah. Okay. I feel like Cardiphilus was not in the manga as much as he was in this. Um, well, I'm kind of glad then because like, I, I thought that was a good villain slash was, what, yeah, an there... actual sympathetic villain, unlike some other ones. <laughs> Yeah, the forced sympathy. Yeah. Um, and that a good thing is you have to have a villain. In, well, I guess you don't have to have a villain, but the fact that, I mean, with this show, you need to have a villain of some coin, I think, because otherwise none of them will grow. So it was nice to see uh, this kind of, not two-faced villain, but a different, a villain with a different personality, I guess, which is nice. Uh, another major character that we haven't talked about is Ruth. Mm -hmm. Oh, Ruth. Austin so, Tyndall is Ruth. Ruth is, uh, I think, my favorite character of the manga for sure. Possibly hmm. of the anime, except uh, I don't like the betrayal of Chisei's trust later on. That's obnoxious. See, I, I like Ruth, but not that much. I, He's got his moments, that's for sure. In, I think I like him because in the manga he has a lot more dialogue, I guess. They have a lot more shared dialogue between he and Chisei, but it's more like thought bubbles because mm. they can hear each other's thoughts. Yeah. Um, and he's a snarky bastard. I love <laughs> it. Um, so I like Ruth a lot, and I was... I remember walking out of the theater when we saw the first three episodes, mm -hmm. and the girls in front of us walking out were like, oh, next she gets her familiar, and, and it's so exciting, and she kept blobbing on about this. I was like, oh, well, I first of all, I don't spoilers. remember that. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, then I was like, well, I, okay, I should, I'm going to read the manga, so <laughs> I devoured it, and once we met Ruth, I was like, oh, familiar, <laughs> oh, okay, yay. I do like the episode of how they sort of meet and mm -hmm. become familiar and, and, gorgeous. and master, or whatever you want to call it. Another visually stunning yeah. moment when they bond. I hate to say it, but like, I hate when Ruth turns back into a human. Yep. Like, Stop doing that. You're a dog, and this is you're better as a dog. You and and plus his human character looks weird to me. He looks the so way young. They, the way they drew him. Yeah. His face is odd, and I'm not sure what they were going for with that. I really, I think they were going for youth. Maybe it doesn't look young to me. It just looks strange. Like the, it's the eyes. The eyes, like his, he doesn't have like full eyes. He has like point eyes. I've seen some people. I don't know. Um, bring up the fact that. They ship Chisei and Ruth. You, you, I know. No. But for me, it's you're I wrong. Mean, <laughs> Sorry. And then other people. Who are Sorry like, oh, if you ship that, it's like, fine. <laughs> but they're like brother and sister. That's better. Yeah, I I don't see them as either. No, you know, but I, is a, I'd I'd accept that more. Because well, is, I I see the argument for that because he's like substituting um, Chisei for his his old master, which I think he called his sister, right? Didn't he? Yeah. It, yeah. Well, it was his. Yeah. It wasn't actually his sister. I don't think he substitutes Chisei. I, he well, lets go of her. Of... Substitutes is maybe a strong word, but that's essentially, he's filling the void with Chisei. <laughs> it's I think okay. at first, I don't think after the bond, I, that doesn't happen, but at first, yes. And then he learns more about her, and I I think that's part of the whole bond, is she he lets his old, uh, his sister go. Yeah, yeah. And bonds with Chisei. I don't ever see it as a replacement myself. Um, How about Alice? What do you think about Alice? She's an interesting character in the manga. Who's Alice again? Alice is, um... Oh, she's the blonde friend, yeah, right? Got yeah. it. Sorry. The bodyguard. I'm really bad with names. I so ship those two. Uh, what, she's and Alice? and Alice, yeah. Yeah, If definitely. I ship anybody, I kind of like Elias and Chisei too, but that that has some problems. Anyway, um, <laughs> yeah. but I, I think they would be fun. And mm -hmm. as you know, I'm a sucker for the first enemies, later friends sort of thing. Yep. And of course they have that. Yep. <laughs> I, Alice is a, I had a soft spot for Alice kind of from the beginning because she's such a tortured soul and I just want to protect her and <laughs> gather her into my arms and just build a shield around her and not let anything happen to her. She's great. She had a hard life. I don't know. I just, I just want her to be happy. <laughs> I, I think she could take care of herself. Well, she's now a, she could. Yeah. She's a, she's a tough girl. Yeah. She's a good character. I, I liked their relationship a lot. I like that Chisei developed friends. Yeah, and I, that was nice. You know, obviously, it helped to show a great, a great side of Elias with with sorry Elias um, <laughs> with jealousy. That was mm -hmm. that was good. Um, but I like that Chisei had not just Alice but also Stella to kind of be friends with and different types of friends mm -hmm. as well. Yeah, I feel I feel like Elias in those moments is kind of everybody at some point in their life. Yeah, like Ugh, who so has childish. not? But who has not? felt jealousy over some sort of relationship. 
Yeah. Maybe not that extreme, but... <laughs> what, you don't turn into a demon and go <laughs> pouting off into the woods? Yes, no. And then but... try to kill your board? <laughs> what? But haven't we all, and especially if we haven't been taught what that is and how to manage it? Yeah. Like, you have, like, he has nobody to, to try to understand that with. Except Chise herself. He could ask her about it. True, I... <laughs> but are you gonna, uh, are you gonna ask the object of your jealousy about why you feel that way toward them? Or well, toward I what mean, they're I doing? Guess he did it eventually. Yeah. I don't know. And I... no offense to Chise, but she's not always the best teacher in this regard either. I do think that that lack of communication between the two of them kind of stalled out for me after a while. Yeah, they that, use that a lot. That did get a little like, like, okay, when are you going to learn to yeah. overcome this? Because we've had like three or four major instances and you always say like, all right, we're going to talk to each other from now on. And then of and course then you don't. Something else happens. Usually she says dying after yeah. that. That So that got a little bit overdone for me. Which... Yeah, I would agree. If if that's, that's definitely one of the more plot related problems. Mm hmm. Uh, another, uh, again, the manga hasn't finished, so I don't know the resolution. I feel like the end again was just rushed for this. And it does, it does kind of make me feel like we're open to another season. Yeah, obviously, you're gonna have to wait. From what I understand, there's not really enough manga material to no. do another season right now. Yeah. Even a half a season, I think. This catches up pretty close. I think this catches up to book six, and there are seven volumes out right now. Yeah, so there you... Yeah. Need quite a few more. Uh, yeah, I in the grand scheme of things, it didn't feel too terribly rushed mm -hmm. to me, but maybe a little. And yeah, I would definitely be open to more, of course. I think most people are uh, are are eager for more if they were to choose to do that. But yeah, a lot of that will depend on the uh, on the manga and all the other stuff that goes into that. Did you have any favorite plot arcs? Hmm. I know I'm kind of spraying this on you, so you can take a minute if you need. <laughs> Probably like the first half her building up her learning magecraft and building up to the big finale of her getting her wand, wand and all that yeah. stuff like that i think because it was the most sort of magic centric mm -hmm. i really liked that i think that i think that one if i had to that definitely had the most impactful like moments and like oh my god that was awesome kind yeah of thing. how about you uh i really liked the little storyline with Joel, and that was one of my favorites. Oh in the, yeah, okay, that that was a good one too. That actually, that was probably the one moment that got me kind of choked up a little bit. Yeah, the mm -hmm. Liana and she, and oh man, that was okay. That was a good one. Yeah, I almost forgot about that. I really like that. That the what is? I do love. This isn't really a, an arc, but a but the the moment where Elias uh, eats one of the fairies, basically eats, and then is like. He's like, I'm gonna kick your ass. Yeah. And then the the whole like sort of little negotiation with the fairy and it's like, I just want to protect Chise. It's like, then we are of one mind. Yeah. <laughs> like, let's do this. <laughs> that was kinda cool. Um so Red Current is the phase name who is uh she's she feeds or her kind feeds off of creativity. This is the um, Liana Li and she. Yeah. And I just, their story was so sweet. And in the mm -hmm. manga, when that happened, I was like, oh, this is so cute. I mean, oh, oh, it's, you know, that. And then the, I really like Shannon, the Faye doctor. I liked her mm -hmm. relationship too with Chise. Because that moment where she shoves Chise under the lake to kill her, essentially, yeah. was so shocking in the manga that I was oh, like, yeah, what that the was hell like, is going on? I'll admit, I didn't see that coming. Yeah. So that is one of those surprises in the show that I was like, oh, God, okay, well, great. <laughs> let's <laughs> let's do this. And then, you know, of course, it's for a reason. Um, and I I just ended up really liking her. I like her tactics. <laughs> <laughs> I like the, uh, oh, God, Angelica. Mm -hmm. The, like, Yay! magical yes. stuff Angelica maker. Angelica David. Ah, uh, the, the mortal husband. Yeah. <laughs> that was one thing that I wish that they had um, brought into the anime from the manga is they have a great little page, or two, I guess, um, <laughs> of Angelica and David meeting, and he is much younger, and she's the mm. same age as we see her. Mm. Thus, you know, showing that she's not going to age as fast as he does. Yep. Which just kind of adds to that melancholy of their relationship, but they're just so cute. Reminds me of, the, like, the witches in uh, His Dark Materials. Yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah, absolutely does. And it, it kind of makes you wonder if the, if the mangaka had taken anything from that because there are a couple elements from his dark materials that i kind of picked up yeah on. it wouldn't surprise me yeah who knows yeah <laughs> i have one thing to bring up kind of just the sort of an overall atmospheric kind of thing of the show mm -hmm. 
And my note is, the show makes magic magical, mm -hmm. which might seem redundant, but there are a lot of shows that use magic have two or one of two different sort of issues I find with the whole treatment of, of magic. And either they go the way of, say, fairy tale, where magic is just really superpowers. Yeah. It's not really magic, as, as I think in, like, high fantasy would define magic. Or you kind of go the way a Harry Potter goes, where after a certain amount of time, it just becomes sort of banal. And it's like, yeah, yeah, of course you can do that. Whatever. Yeah. Who cares? But this one, like, it, like every big instance of magic felt really like this was legit magical stuff happening here. Like, it was always exciting and always interesting. And, like, there was reason and, and rules behind it. And consequence. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, I, and I, I really like how they just treat magic in this show. And I really like that magic takes energy it takes it's not just like a, oh i'm gonna wave my wand and this is it no it's exactly like, is it's elemental mm -hmm. more of the show which is you know as much as i hate seeing she say in pain i really like seeing that magic is a source of her and a source of the earth and the ground and the trees and the fae uh, instead of just like a, i'm gonna say a funny word <laughs> yeah <laughs> which i mean yeah kind of do but it's not just book learning and it's not just yeah like i said it's not just superpowers mm -hmm. And yeah, it definitely, it's definitely a fantasy show, which I don't think I've seen much of. I feel, I, I, I've been craving more fan, like high fantasy tour. There's no, I guess this is, this is low fantasy technically, but I want more fantasy shows in my life. And this was nice to fill some of that void. Do you know of any others that might be a good stepping stone from this or to this? Are like low fantasy like this mm -hmm. or like high fantasy? Either one. Any type of that. Because I haven't seen many. I don't count Monoka. <laughs> no, that's kind of... <sighs> I feel like my brain is kind of foggy. I have to come back to that. Yeah. Maybe we can talk about this post-show. I yeah, can yeah. probably think of. Um, I'm excited to watch Grand Blue Fantasy. Which yeah. seems like that's going to be one that, that fits that bill. That's true. Um, the problem... I think I feel like the problem is like the fantasy sort of genre has been like eaten by the isekai genre, which is not really what I'm shooting for. And isekai is... Is the strange world anime? It's the someone from our world is stuck in some other world. Sword it's, Art Online. It's yeah, Sao was the the one that sort of catapulted this into the the popularity it had. But you got Log Horizon, you've got Grimgar, you've got NGNL. Um, yeah, NGNL. Yeah. You've got the Death March was last season. You've got at least one every season. Hmm. ReZero was a really popular one. Oh yeah. They're, so many. Wow. They are everywhere. They're usually based on light novels. I'm not sure why that is, but it just is. Um, and yeah, they are. And not that I have anything against them. Like, I love NGNL. I like SAO. I love Log Horizon. Um, I'm excited for ReZero. But it's not the same thing as, mm -hmm. again, I'm looking for, like, high fantasy or something like Magus Bry, which is definitely low fantasy because it exists in, like, right. our world, quote unquote, but has that feel to it as opposed to... What what you're seeing right now with the the person with connections to our own world that isn't necessarily magical or yeah. if you ask me what's the most overplayed genre right now I feel like isekai is definitely it I would definitely like to see more low and high fantasy myself it does it does feel much different it Ooh, just claymore would be Clay a good one Whoa, there you go if, it's a little darker I knew you'd come to that it's a lot darker but it's really good. I knew you'd Sorry. start with something. No, no, that's fine. I don't know why that one just popped into my head there. <laughs> no, I mean, you know, like I was just saying. They're legit aren't enough. I feel like there should be more, but. It just makes for easy viewing, I guess. I liked, I like watching anime with stakes. I like drama and I like emotion. And then sometimes I really just want to just watch a fun magical show that doesn't involve yeah. killing a lot of protagonists. <laughs> I just love fantasy. Like, it's a great genre. I love yeah. that you can do so much with it. I like, even if it sort of, like, sticks very close to, like, the standard wheelhouse, I still really like it. Mm -hmm. Anywho. Mm -hmm. uh, Silky has a lot of a different role in this than she did in the manga. A.K.A. Silver, as yes. we hear her. Why Silver is lady. that different? I'm trying to, I never figured that out. I, mean, I feel like the Silver Lady was, well, I don't know, because Chisei calls her Silver. Yeah. Hmm. That's a good Question. And I like that she's a banshee, or was a banshee. Was a banshee, yeah. And That's kind of a cool, and now she's just like... She's one of my favorite characters, chill. actually. Like, she has no lines, but I love her. Which is crazy, because in the manga, she's not in it all that much. She <laughs> really is a background character. Just like, oh, she's the housekeeper. I'm really glad they made her a little bit more than that then. Cause... I love when she hugs Chisayden towards the end, oh, just I like glomps her. She, like, oh. she has some of the more emotional little moments. Yeah. And again, it's just, it's very simple. 
But she also has a lot of the funny moments where she like, you know, the stare, yeah. <laughs> the disapproval or uh, whatever it is. And then, oh my God, that episode where like yeah. her big backstory episode where she was left alone for yeah. apparently a very long time, which didn't, it shouldn't seem like it would go, was going to be, but all of a sudden it was, it's like, oh, yeah, I'm so, she had a I great feel so little, bad for her. She had a great backstory episode. That was definitely, it's amazing what you can do with no dialogue, mm -hmm. just with music and with animation. I, that's one of my favorite things that anime can do. It shows you so much with so little. This just hits I me. I agree. I like Silky. But yeah, I mean, I liked seeing her more in this, which was great. Speaking of music, I really like the the like first few seconds of the first opening song. Like, I really like. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it, was a, it definitely got you in that sort of magical mood, I felt like. Yep, that's true. Um, I'm trying to think of what else. I mean, I can talk about the differences between the anime and the manga, but <laughs> we kind of already touched on them. Yeah. There's just more. In the manga, Chisei looks a lot more run down. And I think you can do that with shading and because it's black and white. So mm -hmm. you can show more shading under her eyes is basically the big thing. She's a lot more miserable in the manga and it takes a long time for her to kind of come into her own. Whereas mm. I feel like with the anime, she kind of, she doesn't jump into it right away. But, you know, around episode four or five, she really starts becoming more, you know, as we would consider, quote, normal. And in the manga... Though it never ceases to remind you that she is really fragile. Yeah. It's like every couple episodes she's you know, vomiting blood or she's mm -hmm. passing out or... That's one thing I wish that we had, ex or they had explored more was the slave beggy race. I guess I'm calling her a race. Um, but why, you know, why she is falling apart constantly. And also how, exactly how long is it going to take for her to die? Because they keep like, oh, well, she's close to death and then she... <laughs> you know, defies it again, it's like, okay. The prognosis, I'm not sure, but... The prognosis do, with the, as an, was another they tiring do, trope. That they do talk about how that, she, you know, a slight baggy produces ridiculous amounts of magic, mm -hmm. but you have this human body that just can't deal with it. Yeah. I kept wishing that they would show more of that somehow. Just show more mm -hmm. of the slave baggy lore, mm -hmm. or more of what Chisei has done, maybe as a kid. I'm thinking, like, you know, in Harry Potter, where they... Have you ever made anything happen when you were scared or nervous? Mm. I want to see more of that kind of Chise. Like, has she lost control when she was a kid or things like that? I mean, because we see that she sees Faye. Yeah, I mean, I guess they do a little... I, I just watched the OVA, and they kind mm. of they kind of address a little bit of that in that, because mm. it's all about her as a kid. But it is it is mostly just seeing the, the Faye creatures and, yeah. and those sort of driving her yeah. basically mad and causing all sorts of problems with the sort of foster family mm -hmm. she ends up in. By the way, I can't, like, the term slave beggy. I was wondering when the crap out of me, sorry. I don't know why, it just, like, it just sounds it's dumb just to me. It's a weird word. It does, like, it just, it's it's not the right word. I don't know what is the right word, but that's not it. Yeah. Maybe because, like, mean. it's like, okay, I think of, sl it's like, okay, Santa's sleigh, and then, like, beggy, like, buggy, I, I don't know. <laughs> It's just, it's an odd word, and I don't know that it has any historical connections. Like, this is something I think, I feel like they just made up for this. Maybe. Maybe this sounds better in Japanese, but in English it sounds bizarre to me, and just not, not what I would imagine. I don't know. Maybe they were, I, they could very well be making it up and, you know. Like, I did a quick search, and all I came up with was Magus Bride stuff, yeah. but. I kind of like that. I kind of like that they developed that for themselves, and then. Oh, I mean, yeah, I'm totally know. fine with you making something up, but. I just don't like the, the the sounds you chose for this thing. It's just weird. Again, maybe in Japanese this seems fine. Well, I never had any issue with it, so I'm I glad because I, I think that would have distracted me. I'm I I'm 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 weirdly sensitive to like sounds and things, with words, and there's just some words sound good and some don't. Um, what did you think of their choice to not do British accents? We are in London. I didn't or even England. think of it. Jeez. I, I thought of it because I watched that little behind the scenes video with uh, that that Kyle Phillips, the ADR director, uh, posted, and he kind of brought this up. I didn't even think about it. I don't particular. I'm not particularly warm to any non-British actor speaking in a British accent, and that goes for any other accent and any other nationality. I never. I don't know. Dialect coaches are great. I haven't seen many roles that are great with that. I, I don't know. I think it would have been more distracting. Yeah, I I very much agree with the choice not to do that mm -hmm. because I've heard Funimation use accents and this is not always the case, but often I feel like the accent is getting in the way of the acting. Yeah. Like I can I can hear them struggling with it. Mm -hmm. 
And especially if it's like a simul dub, you don't you do not have time yeah. to sit with an actor and teach them the nuances of an accent. Mm -hmm. And I'm also not one to say like you have to get the accent perfect. That's not the point. I'm not like, oh, it's not authentic. That's I don't care. But if it's going to be at the at the expense of the acting and the and the the character, then get rid of it. Yeah. If you all just speak generic, then then it's fine. Then that's just like, there is no accent. That's just how yeah. it works. And yeah, again, that's kind of what I thought. It was like, nobody had an accent, so I didn't notice it. Yeah. If one person had had an accent and nobody else did, oh, that, yeah, would that would have been, been so Unless they were from somewhere totally different, then yeah. maybe you could get away with it. But yeah, yeah I'm... I'm glad they did that. I've heard, and, and it seems to be especially English accents that just sound mm -hmm. weird. Like, I can't remember what it was, but I've heard Colleen do... It's Maria and, the Virgin Witch. I'm thinking of it. Yeah, yep. I did not like that one. I'm yeah. sorry, Colleen. And again, great, that's like, a... I blame know, the director for that. Set just, in France, and I just nobody don't, has accents. Yeah, I just don't. That was a... I think that was a bad choice. Yeah. Um, I have not seen Yuri on Ice yet. I've heard those are actually pretty good. Mm -hmm. We will see. Well, even, you know, thinking of strike witches, those girls come from all sorts of nationalities, but nobody has an accent, which yeah. is nice. Yeah, it's uh, sometimes they're, sometimes they can be fun. Like, um, Infinite Stratus has, has a German accent and a British accent. And I love, maybe this is because, um, Tiffany Grant is really good at this, but she mm -hmm. does a great German accent. So she right. had it and that was great. I, but again, though, Britney's UK accent, mm, maybe could have done without that. I like it. <laughs> I like when characters speak another language, but the accents I would probably draw the line at. Yeah, it's not it's that a... I have any control. You guys can do what you want. Yeah. But it's it is kind of a contentious subject, and it's always a question like should you or shouldn't you? Yeah. But I'm I'm usually on the side of no accents. So what did you end up rating Margaret's Bride? I gave it an eight. Oh, that's pretty solid, actually, for you. Yeah. Well, oh, nice. Uh I gave it probably a seven. Well, this has eight and a half. Oh. I don't know if that Oh, not scored. Ha! <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> uh, that's Sorry. funny. Didn't give um, it anything. I mean, I again, I wish there were halves because I would do seven and a half yeah. if I could. I would probably rate this a seven. You're right. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> I'm so harsh. I rated the manga higher, I would say. Hmm. I would rate the manga an eight and the anime seven. And that could very well just be the translation from page to screen for me. I thought, and again, but my sevens are above average. My sevens are very much, this was a good show. Yeah, the only reason I know you said seven, because I usually one minus whatever I am, so. Yep, that's true. <laughs> I'm very harsh. Well, I, my own person, I mean, I don't think I'm harsh. I just think I have a different way of looking at yeah. it sometimes. I don't know, to me, like, the eight says very good. I would say this is See, very good. See, my seven is very good. So, there you go. We're the same. <laughs> uh, I think it was just fine, and it was very enjoyable. Again, it, it's not super high on my rewatch scale. However, I am looking forward to another season slash the upcoming manga. So it was a quality show. Um, Brian, were you able to read the source material before you recorded? Um, because there is a manga and which no. I devoured. Uh, I did not. I did not get to read the manga. That is something that I, I would like to do. And the reason I say that is because sometimes when we record these, these projects, we don't have a whole lot of time to to study them before we actually get to do them. Now, our director, Kyle Phillips, had studied it a lot before we, specifically Danny Chambers and I, came in to record it. So he knew the story. He knew where the story was going. He knew the essence of everything and what he wanted to get out of us. So he he was very comfortable with with everything with the story. So he did a really good job at directing her and I at what he wanted to, to get out of us for the story. And... Uh, yeah, I, I, I if I had more t if I'm allowed more time in the future on a project, I would love to read the manga because I I have so many people ask me that did did you read the manga before you did it? Did you? And it's like no, I didn't. I mean, it's like back when when I did fairy tale and and those sort of things that, that, that people are always asking about if is there a manga for this or a manga for that and I'm like uh no i need I, somebody send me a manga uh, some some manga to look at at least you know send me a volume let me <laughs> yeah. um but uh yeah I, I but i i appreciate that kind of question though because i it's it's like when people read a book of that's been turned into a film. Now, did you actually read the book before you did the movie? Mm -hmm. No, I, I didn't. I didn't. And they changed the story. I said all that to say yes. I, in the future, I am going to try very hard to read the manga before I I dive in. 
because I do I do like doing research and as, as a stage actor too I love to do research and that sort of thing so for this since there's already you know a, a story that's been written and it's already been put down in print and all that and with the with the pictures and the with with the words it it would it would help me mm-hmm. much better as an actor just to to dive in even deeper to really understand it yeah well, it's a great time to start. It's only seven volumes in, so yeah, it's you not know, like fairy tale, like fairy which tale. is how many volumes? I don't even want to guess. Four hundred and eighty-two volumes. That's, Yikes! Sounds right. I, <laughs> I, mean, I can really. believe it. <laughs> <laughs> so seven seems like pretty small change there. Right. <laughs> um, okay, uh, we do have plenty of Elias-specific questions, um, but oh, cool, sort of great. Before all those, just kind of generally, how how did you like the part? How did you approach creating the voice of Elias? Oh man, I I have just I have just really fallen in love with this character. I Elias is is probably one of the as far as anime characters, he he is probably the only anime character that really sounds closest to me mm-hmm. as, as my in my normal everyday kind of coffee talk speaking <laughs> voice mm-hmm. um my uh if if you if you ever watched uh fairy tale my mac my uh macau yep. is 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 pretty close to my real speaking voice but i i found like elias is more of my intimate sound mm-hmm. of mm-hmm. like if we were sitting around and having drinks together and we were talking about very deep things and and that sort of thing i i uh i really enjoyed him a lot and Kyle did I know I've already mentioned Kyle once but Kyle did such a good job of of pulling things out of me and 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 saying let's let's be let's be more gentle on this but let's be inquisitive when we're asking this because you don't really understand mm-hmm. you're you're not you, you don't really understand what her feelings are and you don't understand what feelings are period so let's try to you know and he just he did a really good job of of pulling things out of me and and approaching the character um Kyle originally had had talked to me about um he wanted a really warm sound he wanted him to be gentle but have that kind of under bubbling power mm-hmm. in there and just the, the 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 warmth was the was the thing that came across that wor- was the word that kept coming up a lot was that he wanted him warm and cuz we we laugh, we would laugh in the studio <laughs> we would laugh in the studio about how many times i actually said chise oh, yeah. so yeah. <laughs> so nice it was game out of that. Yeah. so <laughs> exactly a very no, a very, very nice, nice drinking game, game <laughs> sir. So, as, as a matter of fact, don't go anywhere drinking game. <laughs> yeah. You're not allowed to even call an Uber drinking hey, game. Lauren probably um, won't participate drinking game. Yeah, be on the floor. That's right. That would be not After the first great. episode. Yeah. First episode. <laughs> exactly. So we it was it got to be a, it got to be a thing because that's that's kind of where and I said all that to say this that's kind of where I discovered where his voice landed was the first few times that I actually said chise that it all always started coming out the same time so it, or the same way every time so everything was always chise chise <laughs> 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 so so it was it was like okay well I, I we found Elias this is where his this is where his voice is living so well, it's actually yeah. yeah really interesting yeah. to to hear the process and and now you say that it it does it does come off very natural and there definitely is that that warmth there that yeah that Elias brings but also as you kind of mentioned the the gravitas can be there as well right 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 and it was it was it was also fun, strange and funny and amusing for us in the studio whenever we, we would have those those out really out of character moments. I don't know what I don't know what they refer to them in the manga, but where Elias's head would change mm-hmm. to yeah, that very I, cartoony, I, I always thought, like, goofy Elias in my head. And that's yes, like... <laughs> yes. I, I'll 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 buy that. I'll call him Goofy Elias. And every time he would go to that, we had to discover where the voice went mm-hmm. with that mm-hmm. because he was not still. Uh, warm uh elias i'm talking to chise blah blah da 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 talking yeah <laughs> i've got my my shroud over my head i'm wearing a big cape and oh and then he would talk really crazy and hi and and so we had to we were like where where are we gonna how are we gonna do that and then bring it back down so we 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 played with him a lot to um really go out of his 
quote unquote, go out of his box to to make him sound comp- a kind of a juxtaposition of what he normally sounded mm-hmm. like to, I guess, alternate universe Elias, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> for lack of a better word. So obviously one hurdle of anime that you didn't have to deal with. <laughs> oh, I know uh, what you're going to say. Recording Elias was the, the flaps. Oh, <laughs> that is like Christmas every day. I was going to ask, it, is it, it harder or is it easier? Oh, I feel like it would no. have to be easier. Right? Oh, it's so much easier, you guys. It's so much easier. <laughs> and it, you can always you can tell the real anime fans are like, how does it feel not, recording something without flaps? Okay, you're a rock star. You know exactly <laughs> what we're talking about. That was one of the first things that Kyle Phillips said to me when I got cast in the part. He said, okay, and the best thing about this... <laughs> is we have no flaps. I'm like, what? No flap? We don't have to match any flaps? He said, yeah, you're, you're, you're like a skull head and the, and the, the jaw doesn't move. And, and I'm like, well, this is fantastic. <laughs> so what was, what was so great about that <clears throat> is that I was not limited to, number one, I was not limited to matching the flaps. So that was great. So I had, number two, I had a lot more freedom as an actor to give different kind of emotional weight Mm. to to different different words now the th- but the third thing was i still had to make it fit in the right amount of time mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so it was kind of uh it was not not a curse at all but it was there was a little more blessing than curse um <laughs> i i could yeah. get because i could i had just a i had just a smidge more freedom acting wise but i still had to make it fit in a certain amount of time so if that if that makes any sense mm-hmm. but not having to not do the flaps made my job and of course Kyle and our engineer made their job so much easier and the only time that we had to match flaps for Elias was the very few times that he had a a human face mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. not and, often yeah not, yeah not which that was often. like i think maybe one or two episodes mm-hmm. and it always yeah. felt yeah. really bizarre whenever he did yeah. at least to yeah. me which yeah, it's sure. supposed to, yeah. you know. Yeah. It's like this is wrong. The first time that happens in the manga, it's like, wait, who's that? <laughs> yeah. What's going? Exactly. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So um, that was yeah. that. That was that was great. We definitely. I well, with this show, uh, it's so visually beautiful. Mm-hmm. Oh, it um, is, isn't it? Yeah. So many sequences. I mean, all of it is beautiful, but there are so many specific sequences that are just animated so gorgeously. The one that comes to mind is when. Chise finishes her wand and returns to Elias. Uh-huh. And that that type of visual in anime still is something that is that hits me because I'm relatively new to anime. Mm-hmm. Um, and that is the type of thing I love. Like, ooh. Would, would you say yeah. it was magical? It was it's <laughs> magical. <laughs> Sorry. You know, it's wow. it's it's interesting that you say that because I had only I had only watched after we record after we started recording. I had only I I, I had seen the first couple of episodes only on my computer and then when i finally got to watch it on my television was oh it was i was like oh my gosh this show is so beautiful to look at i mean because i get i get to watch it in you know 48 inch high definition and i was like oh this it's it's so pretty i can't can't stop watching yeah so yeah it's it's visually stunning to look at i I think that's another thing that that people are really digging about it is just it's just it just looks so cool, yeah. You know, and the 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 the, the, the anime is beautiful and it's smooth and it's yeah, it's yeah. it's mm-hmm. fun to watch. It's was one of my first like true fantasy anime, mm-hmm. I think. And what I really we were discussing in our show when we recorded was uh, having characters who are actually mages and not learning magic from like uh spells and wands and like and not, harry potter and not having like the fairy tale idea where it's it's mostly just they have superpowers and they just right. call it magic mm-hmm. right um, so this is you know that deeper nature magic right um and right. there are so many things that chise has to learn um and that elias teaches her um because mm-hmm. he had you know in order to keep her alive and to make her a mage um, yeah. What I really loved about this show was how much Chise ended up teaching Alaya. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. That's so, true. <laughs> uh, that's that's a great. That's pick great. your brain about that a little bit. Yeah, like who teaches whom? You know, uh, which which lessons stood out? Uh, you know, it's that's really I I, I love that. Um, what is it? 
what is it? What is that quote from the musical uh, King and I? Um, oh, please, about... please keep going. I would know it. <laughs> oh, oh it's um, I don't know that one. Uh, something about teaching, and by by teaching your students, your yourself, you are taught. Mm-hmm. By by teaching your students, they teach you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. About yourself, uh, I can't remember the. As you quote, become a teacher, by your teachers, you are taught. Yes, yes, you. Like that, yeah. That's for the win. There we go. <laughs> Yeah, it's something like that. Pupils, right? you are taught. That's what thank it is. you. Yeah, yep, yes. got it. Yes. I knew I would get it eventually. I <laughs> was just you. playing the song. <laughs> We're all going on Jeopardy now. Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah. We'll take Rogers and Hammerstein for five hundred, Alex. <laughs> got it. Um, yeah, I think it, I think it's great in the in the writing that because she she challenges him so much and, and you know and he he questions he questions so many things mm-hmm. about her as. A person, yeah, and mm-hmm. he. I love how he asks questions about, you know, when he's when she says that, you know, uh, th- that the way that makes me feel, and he's like, feelings. What does that? What does mm-hmm. that mean? How do you mm-hmm. explain feelings? Because I, I, because he doesn't know what feelings mm-hmm. are, and mm-hmm. I think she teaches him just as many things as he teaches her. And can I just say, as a, as a side, I. It, I, I isn't Danny Chambers wonderful? I oh, love. Oh yeah, absolutely. She was. I absolutely love her voice for she say, mm-hmm. and I just love the the. Just, she's just so open and just kind of raw mm-hmm. and yeah, it's fair, a very genuine. You know? voice oh, it's to the so character. genuine. Yeah. Oh, it, she's so she's so great. Yeah, and she's and we, such an isolated character too, and that she you, is just to bring her. <clears throat> she can almost be unlikable if played poorly and that was not the case here exactly I mean, mm-hmm. exactly and she, i mean when she first spoke it's like oh, okay yeah this is good yeah and she and i were never in the same room mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which is just and it just goes to which show. Is, it it, <laughs> <laughs> it was it was so amazing because there there were times when i would record uh my parts and she wasn't there or she had not recorded her parts mm-hmm. and i was recording mine first and vice versa yeah, I just think she's. I think she's wonderful. Mm-hmm. She's just wonderful, and I think she's got some good things ahead of her. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's oh, definitely, really terrific. Yeah, we're really looking forward to seeing more from her because, of course, mm-hmm. we ha- we don't have a lot yet. No, not really. Is... Yeah, you will. Mm-hmm. I I have, I have a feeling that, that you will. Yeah, I'm always excited to hear newer voices, one that I haven't encountered. Like I I love a lot of the actors, and we hear them over and over and over again. And I'm I'm not one that's going to complain about that, mm-hmm. but I do like that they give. Different talent and newer talent a chance as well, especially yeah, on a big so property like this. Yeah. <laughs> so do we. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'd imagine so, we're very grateful. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, that's great. Especially in this kind mm-hmm. of show, you both had so much material to work with. You had all aspects of characterizations, which was yeah. such a pleasure to listen to. We are so hoping that there's going to be a season two. Yes. We, we, we <laughs> hope we really I think do. everyone is um, hoping that. Yeah. We, <laughs> we, we love it. We love, we love doing the show. We, we hope, and we hope that we hope that a lot of that is fan driven. We hope that, that fans reach out and they're like, we love H and Megas bride so mm-hmm. much. Make, you know, please bring in a, a season two, three, four, and five. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, Hopefully they keep yeah, writing. We, yeah. Whoever. Please keep writing. The Please, is. Forever yeah, and she's ever. still doing it. I mean, it's go. still going. Yeah. So. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah. And she's relatively new as well. Um, the mangaka is uh, fairly new mm. to this too. I think this is her first major manga. Oh. So it's really exciting so exciting. to. That's a big one to get <laughs> right off the bat. It is. It, it <laughs> is, isn't it? Yeah. That's so it's, great. It's so cute. Well, you guys, <laughs> you guys have gotten me so excited about the manga. I'm gonna have to go. Ahead and get the manga. Awesome. I recommend I mean, it. <laughs> I really enjoyed it. I need to go out and get it. I'm gonna I'm gonna show up at a at a con in and in a, I'll be in a corner reading the Megas <laughs> Bride manga. So you can thank Wallacast. You're yeah, welcome, guys. perfect. Uh, yes, perfect thank you, Wallacast. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you so much, Wallacast. Please, <laughs> please book me at cons all over the world. Thank you very much. I'm curious how you went about creating the voice of sort of the the creature Elias when he sort of did the transformation to his more. Faye esque. Yeah, I was gonna say demonic, but Faye yeah. works best. Yeah, it's got that mm-hmm. that extra sort of gritty, growly notes to him. When we when we did that, we kind of take took him from his his regular voice to it. It was a challenge because we we had to take him to a emotional place mm-hmm. without showing a lot of emotion because he's emotionless. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> you know, Great irony. so that was you know not not to get 
too heady, but that's that's what we were kind of grappling with is like, well, we we have to make him darker. <laughs> well, darker is as an emotion. Mm-hmm. Okay. But are we emoting? <laughs> or are we <laughs> are we where where are we taking him? So I I guess the way that I the way that I took it was he he's taking on a different physical form. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So his voice is going to sound different. And if it's coming across in a different emotional way, then it's because of his physiology or his biology mm-hmm. of how he is shaped. Does that make sense? Yeah, definitely. So I'm just uh, picturing you like on your hands and knees in the booth right now, <laughs> just like <laughs> twisted. Just really yeah. getting into it. Can we bring yeah. the mic down to the floor? <laughs> that's right. That's right. I you know, it's it's funny. We 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 need to we need to do more sessions like that where we have more GoPros and things like that in the in the studio so you can see if we actually do anything crazy like that. <laughs> I I didn't. I I think I think I placed my voice in just a, a a kind of a darker place, and I think they might have added some enhancements to it. I'm. Mm-hmm. It's been a while since I actually listened right. to <clears throat> to those episodes. Yeah, if they um, did, it didn't seem like they they did too much, which I think was a good idea. Yeah, well, that's good. That's <laughs> yeah, good. The... Um, thank you. Yeah, I, I I don't I don't really recall them doing a whole yeah. lot to it, but I I would have to I, if I went back and listened to it right now, I could tell you. Oh yeah, there's there's a few enhancements here and there. Yeah. Or they did this, and I like so. I like that they didn't go extreme with yeah because they I think they could have. You could have made them this like snarly, drooly, monstrous thing, mm-hmm. but I like that they they kept a lot of his humanity. <laughs> Weird that yeah. that sounds. Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah. I guess you know that's you know when you have no word to describe, use the best one you can think of, mm-hmm. and then uh, humanity. I guess would be it. Uh, we could use that as a. <laughs> <laughs> is it a is it a verb? Yeah, is it being right? <laughs> no, but um, or an adjective? <laughs> yeah, uh, a describing word. So yeah, mm-hmm. the the gravelly deep thing. That's always those 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 sessions are always a challenge because mm-hmm. when you're as a listener, you're listening to a few seconds of that sound, right? Mm-hmm. And we sometimes have to do it. Mm, if we're lucky, we only have to do it a couple of times. Mm-hmm. But if they're not getting the sound that they want, or if they have an audio problem, blah 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 blah. <laughs> audio problems? So, yeah. What's that? Audio, well, no, yeah, we, never. We, we don't we don't know what audio <laughs> problems are. <laughs> Sometimes you you'll make you'll make a vocal choice, and you go in your head, you're going, "Why did I do that?" Because now I have to do it <laughs> six more times, <laughs> and you know your voice is turning to ribbons. Yeah, I can imagine so, that being pretty hard yeah, on your so, on your vocal cords after a while. So one has to be careful in your in your vocal choices. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I I have said all I want to say. It's just such a pleasure to talk to you. Yeah, thank you so much yeah. for doing this and oh. again braving all of our technical glitches. Yeah. Oh, my pleasure, you guys. Um, uh, it was great. I'm happy to talk to you. And you guys asked real, really great questions. I mean, thank you. Thank yeah, you. it was yeah. really fascinating to hear some of the answers. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. and yeah, we both love the show and love the character, and, and your portrayal was was fantastic. Yeah. And I oh, think probably thanks. could not have been done better. Mm-hmm. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, I here's fingers crossed for season two, three, and beyond. Yep, definitely. Uh, Brian, can you let our listeners know where they can find you to follow your work? Yeah, you can follow me on Twitter at Sing Act Drum. Wow, mm. that's a crazy combination. <laughs> and you can also follow me on Instagram, and my and my Instagram name is my name. Hey, plus seventeen. Easy. So it's actually Brian Mathis seventeen. You can follow me on Instagram. And again, Twitter is at Sing Act Drum. And I have a Facebook like page, but it's got a million letters and numbers, and I don't even know how to tell you that. <laughs> I'm sure but, people can uh, search you, can look, you uh, and they'll you find You can you. search me on my Facebook like page. Yeah, and that'll that'll get you connected too. So, yeah. Wonderful. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Well, I just followed you on Instagram. So. <laughs> there you go. Woo-hoo. I know. One more follower for you. So once again, thank you so much for joining us. Brian, this has been great. Oh, yeah, thank you guys. Thanks for it. Yeah, it's such a pleasure. Thank you guys. Thank you. Oh, it was great to talk to you. That's going to wrap up this episode of Wallacast. As always, thank you all for joining us. Best way to never miss an episode is to subscribe, of course, but you can also find us on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and of course, wallacast.com. A massive thank you to Brian Mathis for giving up his time and speaking with us. It was wonderful to hear his insights into the character and the show. 
Look out for next episode where we discuss one of our personal favorite lesser-known idol anime, AKB0048. If you love idols, singing, dancing, mechs, and space bottles, yes, all of that in one show, you won't want to miss it.